I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Camilla Clyhorn. And I'm Chris Yee. You just saw them doing the skating thing at the beginning. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. Fun to story. That's how I dislocated my elbow as a child. Is doing that. Sans rollerblades, but. Just, really? yeah. just being swung around by your yeah, arms and legs. Yeah, my dad used to do that all the time. I dislocated my elbow. It's the closest I've ever been to breaking a bone. Wow. People always say, don't swing your kids. And I'm like, no. Nah, and my them. dad was I'll like, swing them if I watch wanna. this, people. And I dislocated my elbow. So you showed them. That's right. <laughs> can do what I want. This is a great start to our action and dexterity list. <laughs> so basically, I, I say action and dexterity because sometimes the game might not necessarily be quote unquote dexterity, but that's what we're talking about, dexterity. Dexterity comes down to very few categories if you think about it. Mm -hmm. There is flicking. That wasn't my phone. My phone is that right was here. Not. That was not my phone either. <laughs> Um, oh, I should say as a heads up, before we start this list, that we, there's a humongous thunderstorm yes. that was centered overhead just a few minutes ago. So let's hope that the list lasts. But anyway, back to dexterity games. Flicking is one main category. Mm -hmm. And then there is stacking, quote, stacking. unstacking. Yes. There's pushing. Pushing. There's also okay. moving a piece. Well, I was going to say moving a piece without, in some sort of thing. So. I guess pushing would fit that, but like, you know, the labyrinth where you turn the dials and you don't make a fall in the hole. Yeah. That's oh, dexterity, okay. yeah, too. Yeah. That's the most... Like Kabuto's, like the pushing, is that kind of yeah. like something like that? Or Jenga's is a push-slash-pull system. Oh, I a always lot of push, your, I don't pull. Yeah, a lot um. of those simple machine kind of... All of, everyone on my list almost is that. But there's also another category, which would be the dart category. Which is throwing something right. at okay. a spot, yeah, trying yeah. to land on that spot. Mm -hmm. I didn't include mm -hmm. anything like darts that are like that are like not board games. First of all, you know what I mean, like a, cha a chamber game or what are they no, called? No, but that? even if I like was just trying it. to throw that on a target on the table, you that don't right count idea. that. No, I no, would. I would I'm saying that's oh. that category. It's Tossing, like darts. Throwing. It's not. It's almost like flicking. You're just not flicking. Yeah, yeah. I the don't. one. The one thing I did disclude. Mm -hmm. Unclude was exclude. He would have yeah. gotten there. Come on, have faith in him. He, have, he was have, getting there. I was have, enjoying it. We have too many negative prefixes. Uh, <laughs> the one thing I did unclude was speed things, like grabbing really quickly, because I kind of feel like speed mm. games like that are kind of its own category, or like play cards out as fast as you. That's not dexterity. Or action. Why are you pretending right. that this is new to you? We definitely talked about this off air. <laughs> about yes, there's a lot and slapping Me? games. Yes. Oh, slapping games listening. are not I on the list. Agreeing. Slapping <laughs> games aren't on the list for that same reason. There's a lot of games that are speed games, but I don't consider them to be dexterity games. Yes, I, you could argue whoever is fastest, but it's not usually about physical, it's about being able to identify it in your mind. So a it's mental games, dexterity. We're not including Well, mental dexterity is all games, but I mean, it's speed of... He's so easy. <laughs> I am easy. <laughs> Call me. Anyhow, <laughs> what are we talking about? Let's get started with number 10. All right, my number 10 is... Number 10, because I think it is more of an activity than a game, but it is dexterity, and so I put it on, and it is strike. The dice game, or just strike? Roll, dice game, strike, dice game. I specifically never really that. like, what? I never noticed it says dice game on there. It does, just, just in case you didn't pick that up from you know, the cover. That's a reasonable thing to think. Yes. If you play strike, you'd be like, is this a game? I can uh, see, I see why it. they put it on the cover. <laughs> But I specifically like the Harry Potter version of this one because each of the, you're not just matching the numbers and that one is more of a game. Uh, you have to at some point stack the dice up and then you know hit them over. If you have like uh, Wingardium Leviosa, Leviosa, then you stack them up and have to knock them over with another die, things like that. So, so I, I think that this is definitely, I understand it leans more towards activity, but it's so quick, it's so punchy. And again, if it, it just brings in a lot of, um, the, the Harry Potter one brings in a lot of different aspects to the game, makes it a little bit more of a game, I think. And so I, this is easily one of my top five most played games because my son just loves it. And you can play ten times in a row and it's only been ten minutes. You know, it's, it's yeah. Your kid's pretty bad at this is what I'm hearing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't argue with that. I, 
<laughs> no, he's actually really, really good. I give this game more hate than I really feel about it. I don't, I don't really hate the game, but I won't play it again. Oh, really? No, I, I it's, easily. There's like no, nothing. They're like, but you can hit the other people's dice. I'm like. So, so it doesn't make it a game. I so mean, it I, does. It does in in like again the Harry Potter one because you're trying to well like match symbols. But there's certain symbols that if they are out there, then it locks all the dice, so you don't actually get the powers of the dice. So you have to like knock those over specifically in order to break that spell, so that your spell has um, actual effect. All right. Well, so, no, I haven't tried that one. Yeah, it's a I lot will of fun. Not. We've I'm, heard. I'm, I'm the old man <laughs> stubborn right now. Nothing. No, it's Marvel trash. Marvel Strike, I would say, is trash. What? I, would you? I but you'd still would. play it. I'm getting. But you'd play it. Chris, what's your number nine? <laughs> <laughs> ten. <laughs> uh, my number ten is uh, very similar to actually something you mentioned in the in the introduction, right? Very similar to the Labyrinth game. Uh, my number ten is called Slide Quest. This is from Blue Orange, and this is what you. Ooh, this that's is a fun good one. one. I really like this one because you have the levers on the side of you have four levers, and yes, it worked. <gasps> I can do that. I had to make a bunch of gifs, uh, but yeah. So anyway, you are using you're, you're manipulating the little board there in the middle of the box, and you're trying to move your knight around and knock goblins and stuff into these holes. You're trying to not knock over dynamite sticks, otherwise, well, you know what happens when you knock over dynamite. Hopefully, nothing. But in this game, you die. So, uh, you know, in real life, that's why they. I stopped dynamite. listening to you. Um, are all yours gonna have animated gifs? Why only Chris? What? Wait, come on! It's not fair if you didn't do it. You could have told us. Chris took the time to do his. That is not well, fair. Well, Mike does mine for me. Mine are gonna look like trash now. <laughs> I like blaming Mike. Yep. Uh, so anyway, oh. Slight Quest is super fun. I played through all thirty levels of it at midnight at Dice Tower East, not a week ago, but a year ago. Really? You played through all 30 wow. levels? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that, that couple that I played with, we had a very good time. Uh, so yeah, this is a great kids game, but also midnight at a convention when you should be asleep game. Yes. I think a lot of these picks might qualify for that. <laughs> That's <laughs> like... <laughs> fair. All right, I'm going to start out by saying I missed one on my list, which happens often. And I realized that when I went to look at my list and it's not on there. So we'll talk about that if it shows what up on one of y'all's list. But okay. my number 10, which will not have made the list otherwise, and will obviously have a very crappy picture just a moment. That does not move. <laughs> that does not move. Because I did not know we were doing this. Is Sonara. Mm. Now this is kind of a weird one because when I first heard it, I really thought it was a stupid idea of adding dexterity to a roll and write game. But I really like it. You really have strategy on how you flick the thing. So this is the first of many flicking games. I really enjoy flicking games. But I also like the roll and write aspect of this because there's four different boards. And depending on where you flick is which board. You, I like the idea of the four different boards. Twilight Inscription did it and stuff like that. I'm, I'm, and how the boards interact with each other. So I enjoy this one a lot. It very much fell off the zeitgeist, well, like a minute after it was published. Yeah, it was... It was eye-catching. It was cool. Um, you know what? Twilight Inscription probably could have used a flicking mechanism. Yeah! Hmm. I would... I Don't would, do it. Don't I would do legit it. be down. That's your <laughs> combat part right there. Well, anyway, my number 10, which just imagine the flicking, because you couldn't, you couldn't see it. But you can flick the disc and they slide across the board. Sonara. Huh? Oh. Um, my number nine. Eh? I'll tell <laughs> you later. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. My number nine is Fireball Island. This one is more action than dexterity, I get that, but it still has a dexterity feel to me. Well, when you you're taking flick. those. I guess so, yeah, and some of them. And the tigers. And the tigers, yeah. 
Yeah, so I guess so. But I was, yeah. I was I'm specifically helping you talking out here. about like the the marbles. I guess if you're you're doing the the, the one marbles, but I was, the volcano is specifically putting them down there. This one is so you're just trying to go through and collect these gems and avoid all the fireballs that your opponents are either flicking because it's dexterity at you or rolling down. Okay, or you're, you're very <laughs> defensive of something we're all agreeing with you. <laughs> I, this I is expected, a good pick. I expected you to come back and be like, it's not dexterity. I it's considered action. this for my list. Did this you? is my top twenty. Wow, you had twenty. You. I can do 100. I already. Really? I'm going to go through. That's We've impressive. had this conversation Except multiple for the one. times. Really? I, was I there? Yes. What I happened was at the last there. list, I said, they, Z and Sam complained how hard it was. And I was like, I could do a top 100. They're like, whatever. And I, then I went and did one. Oh. It's on the channel. Huh. It's hmm. changed. Maybe I'll subscribe. Um. <laughs> wow, so rude. <laughs> Well, I can subscribe today. <laughs> so Fireball Island, I really like it because you're just going around and, and you're, you're, the fireballs are coming out of the volcano on top and you'll get knocked over and you have to try to avoid them and take out your opponents and sometimes you take out yourself as well. And it's, at the end of the day, a racing game. You're trying to go out and collect these things and get off the island in time. So it's a lot of fun. Again, this is one that my son just loves. It has an incredible toy factor to it. Yes. And mm -hmm. uh, it all, sometimes we only play half the game because we spend a lot of times just setting it up and doing the fireballs and then doing them again and then doing them again and putting Hot Wheels on it and <laughs> putting fireballs on Hot Wheels. You know, all kinds of stuff. So I've anyway. seen there I wish some game had Hot Wheels in it. Oh, yeah. Um, I, that's the main reason that keeps me from getting it out more. It takes a while to set it up. It really does. I, and it's actually mm. harder to put back in the box, even. I don't love the way it Especially goes back in the, the box. Especially with the expansions. you got to remember, this goes in this box. And some sure. of the boards are upside down, which the other ones go inside or on top. It, yeah, it's, it's but definitely... But I love the Tigers. So. I love that flicking... The, like that you push down on it and it... What did you throw, where'd that come from? I was going to throw a cube at you guys at one point, so I just so dropped it. So you did, <laughs> actually. Okay. Well, you threw a disc on the table. What I was really going to do is I was going to bring in a catapult and shoot, and I <gasps> forgot. Forgot to bring the catapult <gasps> in. So that would have been worth it. That would have so been so worth good. it. If you had like secretly texted one of your daughters, be like, come all the way to the office. Right, or like Kenny's sitting bring in the me hall a out there. I was there. going to do that, and then the thunderstorm came. Oh my gosh. Oh, you're a good pair. Not making Aww, your kid walk through the rain. Very kind. Very kind. To bring you a toy. Anyway, fireball, a good choice. Yeah, thank you. I agree. I agree. Yeah, Thanks. yeah. Thanks. Me too. Now be defensive about it. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my number nine is in the sillier side of things. As soon as I saw yeah, as this, to all these serious <laughs> next thirty games. Strike is super serious. That's fair. Okay, you have no room to give me any grief for this. My number <laughs> nine. <laughs> my number nine. As soon as I saw Mike playing this, I was this like, "This is that bowling game." I was like, "This is on the list. It's that bowling game the bowling called game. Wonder Bowling." Oh, okay, Mike told me this. this might be better. Than Viking Sea No, he did not. I don't believe it. I put it in the chat. I so. would believe it. I he said what? he was considering it. Let me show you how it plays. Wow. All right, here's Mike. Uh, boom! You want to try to knock over all but one pin. That's a really good little all catch. All but one. All but one. Wait, wait, wait. And you hit the bottom, you don't hit the actual... You can hit the box, you can hit the top, you can kind of hit it however you want with this little wand. <sighs> and uh, you also have a few target numbers. So if you, you might have like two strikes, so all but one pin is a strike. And then uh, you might have like a four and a six. So if you have four pins standing after you hit it, you can flip over that token. If you have all but six pins standing up, then you can flip over that one. And then the strike is all but one pin. It's a good little That's cute. little twist on, you know, you don't want to knock them all over. Or you want to knock over a certain amount and stuff. And the ones that stay knocked over, or ones that are knocked over on my turn, stay knocked over into your turn. And so oh. eventually you might have it so there's only two pins standing, so you get... You get two shots of trying to knock just the one over. It's okay. It, I want this. Interesting. It yeah. works really well. It's a lot of fun. I made make I made Mike bring it out to Dice Tower East so I could say that I'd actually played it. Oh yeah, because I'm sure that was like he was like, no, no. I don't want to bring it's, it. It's also like this bigger. Do you think they make a giant one we could put at the dexterity tables? I do want a giant <gasps> one. You have to like. We need real hand. bowling oh. pins. No, no, we need. No, come we need on, Chris, come, come <laughs> out! Have you ever picked up a real yes. bowling pin? They're yes. really heavy. They Hold are. that. They yeah. start hammer. That's what I'm saying, Tom. <sighs> See, I was gonna go with the hammer from crowd surfing. The fisty You've one. You've never actually swung the big hammer, have you? I don't know. We have a big hammer. What are you talking about? You hit a hammer from me? It's right on the mantle. <laughs> you can see it every day. It's on the mantle. I don't look up. It is. It is, yeah. It's like, I mean, no joke, the head of it is like this big. What? How did I miss this? This is amazing that you've never noticed I don't it. <laughs> Wait, no. 
All right, we'll show you what we're done here. Life size Wonder Bowling at East next year. Sign a waiver. Or maybe someone will bring it in from the other room who's watching this. We'll see. Okay, uh, well, yeah, Chris is done. Let's go to mine. Sure, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, 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 oh. My number nine. What's Joey doing? Is, Nothing. Okay, so let me tell you this. So we, we talk about, you talk about how silly, silly dexterity games are. What do you think, if I said this is the classiest dexterity game, what would it be? This game is just straight class. Dexterity? Probably. Pro, the the one acceptable dexterity game is probably Crokinole, right? Well, oh, I'm, not, I'm not talking I about that Crokinole. kind of class. I'm talking about this game just looks like a beautiful game. Still Crokinole. Never mind. Okay. It's Tokyo Highway. I don't oh. know that one. Tokyo Highway, and you'll see in a moment, the cars will actually be driving up and down. And, no. Nope, not happening. <laughs> oh, well. Anyway, Tokyo <laughs> Highway... <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a work of art. It really does. It's like and popsicle sticks. You're putting popsicle sticks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, between different pillars, and then you have to balance one of your cars on them. A work of kindergarten art. <laughs> You almost spit that on me totally worth <laughs> I did. it. I feel like absolutely worth it. <laughs> no! No! Tokyo Highway is classy. <gasps> it's gorgeous. Classy. Wait, don't break the. Oh Sorry, my gosh! Now you're the table. Can I have it? No! That what? costs me money! That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> this is the real reason your elbow got dislocated. It's, it's gorgeous. Anyhow, I shouldn't say these things. It's a little, it's dusty. a little dusty. Oh my gosh, what do you hit with it? Everything? I, I think it. it's for decorative purposes. I... Thus being in the middle, although it has, if you've noticed, hit many things. It Tom used to destroy expansion boxes. I used to destroy <laughs> expansion boxes with it. Wow. It would make people sad. It was so worth it. So Tokyo Highway, it really is a great game, wow. and it looks so good on the table. It was, oh, I believe it was not checked out at the Dice Tower Con, I Can think. Was that on the list, or was it checked out once or something? I don't remember. It's also at Dice Tower East. Dice Tower East, yeah. It's very expensive. Awkward. It's a very expensive game, um, I think now. And this company has made a lot of these games. There's one where you drop stuff on an octopus. This uh, is actually that Itten company, the same one that yeah, does Wonder Bowling. Mm. Oh, it is. Mm -hmm. But Wonder Bowling looks dumb. Tokyo Highway looks awesome. And I don't mean that. I don't know how to explain it. Like, if my if there was like some very serious people in, I'd be like, we'll play Tokyo Highway, and I can see them going, this is interesting. Wonder Bowling mm. is when your cousins come over. You're like, hey, let's do this. And like, why not? You think so lowly of my cousins. He was an aircraft carrier technician, Tom. That He's changed. a smart man. Was he in the Navy? Yeah. Okay. Nothing has changed. My <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Let's move on. Before. <laughs> we shouldn't be off the rails at number eight, but can, let's go. I'm doing great. We just lost we power. We just lost power. But we're back. We are? Can, well, they, can they see me? I think it's still working. Can yeah, they? this is why we have backup batteries. All right. <laughs> yes. Keeping it moving. All right. Just reminding um, you of the giant thunderstorm outside if we cut off for any reason. Welcome to Dice Tower Top 3 Dexterity Games. This is not the last kids game on my list, but it is a kids game that I love playing even with adults. This is Strong Stuff. It's actually from Haba. Um, so this okay, is a... Okay, no way on no. earth. Z taught you this game. He's the only person on earth he who, has taught, who, he did who, teach who me pushes this game. This game. <laughs> he did teach me this game. Every time This is the like, only one on the list that he taught me. I know, but I'm saying Z is the yes. world number one proponent oh of this gosh. game. Oh my gosh, but have you played it? I have. It's really good. It's, I, it's okay. No, 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 no. Okay. I don't know this one. I wish I had a moving picture. <laughs> Wow. Okay, yes. So this, this is the only one on the list that Z taught me, but it is so good. So in this one, you have these little, the path you can see in the circle around, and um, on your turn, you have to add a, a disc to the top of the, the bear right here, and you have to move him depending on what die you roll a certain number of spaces, and you can't have any of those discs fall off. So you have to pick up the bear and move him down and then be able to put him down. So the whole time, you're trying to put these discs on top of the other disc and really hurt your opponents. Like, oh, there's no way you can do it. You know, I'm going to put it right on the edge. But then they do it, and so it comes back to your turn, and you have to put another one on it, so you're like hoping to kind of screw them over, but end up like really hurting yourself if they do it. And so it's like, 
like it feels like push your luck. It feels like whoo, whoo, there's no way you can okay, do it. You know, you're like no, wiping no. your hands off on your pants. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. It feels like push yeah. your luck. Yeah. yeah. All the yeah. yeah. games are push your luck. Jenga's push your luck because you put the block on the top. You're trying to mess over the other person. It's the same thing. It doesn't make it not but true, this, then. Right, it doesn't make it not true. No, I understand that, but let's not act like this is a strong... This is what I don't get. Strong stuff is fine. You pick up the thing, don't yeah, make yeah. it fall over. Uh -huh. Lots of games do that. But this one, because it just has that bear factor in the stacks and the different, and the, the, the discs are different sizes. Jenga has a one piece and it's, it's just duplicated what 17 factor times. Bear what? factor. Bear factor. It's got bear factor. I, I, I retract my arguments. Done. I won. Number eight. Strong stuff. Well, the bears pay the I bear been, tax. Uh, I'll pay the homer tax. I would have been more by a, 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 a video, but bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My number eight is, it, it falls into a little bit more of that, like, looks like it could be classier side. Uh, and then they went ahead and called it bonk. This bonk. is... I'm sorry. Enunciate? Bonk. Thank you. So it's, it's also... It's bow and gay, if I'm reading that box correctly. Yeah. Bonk. Bow, bo, North Carolina. Oh, yeah. So bonk is... No. what? Basically, the classier version of Crossfire, like the 90s. I was going to say, Crossfire it's the game. 1800s version of Crossfire, but yeah. yes, it's the yeah. same thing. Oh, but it's classy. It's wooden. I know, right? Oh, this, so, this is classier than King, Tokyo Highway. You've never seen Tokyo Highway, you don't know. I've seen popsicle sticks. <laughs> Uh, so in some, I guess in I some that. markets, <laughs> bonk is called. I hold the hammer. For yeah. <laughs> I guess in some markets it's called roll it, and other places called bonk. It's the exact same thing. I think no the version we have at Dice Diaries was roll it. I think. I think so, and that yeah. is pro that is uh, definitely what that is a picture of. Was me taking oh. it at Dice Diaries to be like, hey folks, do you want to play this really quick for me? <laughs> so Real quick. <laughs> that was yeah. a lot of this is going to be coming from Dice Diaries. That Chris just happened to play. Yeah, there. Chris, Chris made this list uh, Friday at Dice Diaries. Yeah. <laughs> No, this one already made my list. It, it, it was That's just, cool. it's so cool because I love the idea of Crossfire, but like this is just a little bit more controlled than just like shoot the marbles as fast as you can. Because it is possible in this one to shoot all the marbles across and have none. Because there's only a handful that come in the game. So like it's a good mix of being sparing with them, but also if you're hoarding them, you're like, oh, this feels good. Oh, the ball's really rolling into my goal. So it's a lot of fun. That's interesting. Crossfire can grind to a halt. You're sure. shooting and the thing's moving slowly and you're mm. shooting it back at this. Bonk will always end. That yeah. ball is going to roll. But it's really interesting because sometimes you're right, you run out of balls. And then so you hit it and the little ball goes faster. And I'm hoping to grab that and get it down before it goes into my thing. It feels more skillful than crossfire. Interesting. I really like this one. Yeah, it's very fun. Hmm. I'll treat you, teach you strong stuff. No, she said she'll treat you. I'll treat. I you did say that. Treat me to some I, strong I stuff. <laughs> Also fun. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask what that meant, kids. Number eight for me is the only one that doesn't fit in any of my categories because this one is about dropping things. Uh? And mm -hmm. it's called Drop It. Ha ha. So I like Drop It because I like the math involved in the game. <laughs> no, I do. It, that's How many times are you going to say that on an action dexterity list? Almost none. But <laughs> yeah, that, that's I like it I here, but I also like Drop It because... I, I love when people, I played this game, you know, we often exaggerate about how many times you played a game, you know, I played it 50 times, you probably haven't. I have played this game 100 times plus. Um, I demoed it at a con one time, which didn't hurt. But just, it's funny to watch people's, they come to this and some people just drop it in. Other people mm -hmm. sit there and they're like, mm -mm, you know what, it don't matter. Right. Sometimes you drop it in though and it bounces to the right spot and then you feel like you've made this most awesome thing. And other times you're like, well, clearly if I drop this blue piece in this corner here on top of that yellow, which if this was action, you'd be able to see, um, and it will bounce and land on the only other blue piece in there. Yeah. You, right, and you don't yeah. score if it touches the same color or shape. Or shape, right, yes. yeah, yeah. This game is, is great at making you feel like what you're doing matters. When yeah. it doesn't, you well, know, no, like, I, mean, I feel like this, it's like so random. <laughs> but it works really well. It's good for geometry. It works great for kids and it plays yeah. so fast. It does, yeah. I would say it's the fastest on the list, but I don't know if the bowling game is faster from Chris. <laughs> 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 we'll <laughs> never know because no moving pictures to tell Because Mike failed us. Drop it. <laughs> going, Mike. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so my number seven is more of a real-time game. It has very little dexterity in it, but that dexterity feels so incredibly difficult because of the real-time, and that is Fuse. So there's a, there's a couple cards in Fuse where you have to stack the dice a specific way as they come out in different colors and stuff like that. And because this is a real-time game and you're under these time limits, if they fall, you have to start completely over, like with the rolling of the dice and everything. And and that just feels so stressful because you're also under under this time crunch and just trying to get it done as quick as possible. And you're like, don't touch the table. Hold on, hold on. It's only four dice high. It should be really easy. But the dexterity part feels incredibly stressful. That was a close one. Can they see me? Are we still on? Did the TV turn off? The, yeah, TV, the TV, yeah, we down. went completely black. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. It's like a murder mystery <laughs> party situation. Because the lights didn't flicker, but the TV turned off. Okay, we will continue. What were you saying? I don't know. It's stressful. My number seven is Fuse. <laughs> I was. Oh. What were you gonna say? I'll go ahead and agree with her first. No, I mean, I don't. I don't disagree, but I didn't put it on my list. Mm -hmm. I considered it, mm -hmm. and I was like, I think that the dexterity portion is too infrequent for me to, to, yeah. to include it. But at the same time, I did waffle on it a lot. And I can definitely like, see that, because I think it is such a small part, but to me that dexterity feels such a bigger part, again, because it's stressful. What's wrong? Yeah, now disagree, Tom. No, I actually agree with the fact that I, I, don't, I wouldn't say no. It's, it feels small. I'll disagree, though, on the point that I think Fuse is fine. I don't dislike it, but mm. I don't... But the stacking dice during it, my least favorite part. I'm not a big fan of a game that's like, do this dexterity, like, that has nothing to do with the rest of the game. Why am I stacking these things? I, I don't like that. You ever defuse oh. the bomb, Tom? I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what is wrong with you? That, it's, it's, not, it's not like, you know, there's a lot of activities you're like, ooh, killing monsters, you can imagine that that sounds fun and all. Does you mean a bomb? No, no. You give me a bomb to fuse, and I'll be like, red wire, click. Hopefully we're right. Hmm. See, now you'll never ask me. Now we know Tom's weakness. Red wires. Red wires. <laughs> <laughs> They're Man. all red wires. Ah! <laughs> oh, all right. My, goodness. Uh, my number seven is the opposite end of the, the, of the roll it, like classy looking thing. This is, this looks like a children's game. It probably is, but I play it. My number seven is called Kung Fu Zoo. This oh. is. Okay, I have a question as. I have an answer. And I bet. So I know you brought this to Dice Tower East. <laughs> I, I picked it up at the virtual flea market. Well, then that makes my question even more specific. Did you pick it up just to record it to do for this video? No, I re I've wanted this for a long time. And someone mm. was selling it for five bucks on the virtual flea market. And I was like, yes, because it's basically flicking dice billiards. Look at that. The game explains itself. You didn't get the wrestling version. You'd rather have the zoo version. I would rather the zoo version because wrestling sucks, Brian. I'm <laughs> kidding. It doesn't. Um, or maybe it does. I don't know. I worry that the wrestling version has like every character has different player powers and stuff. I just want to flick things into into. No, the, the animals the have some player powers, don't they? They do a little bit, but I also sometimes play with them, uh, and other times don't because I mean, look at that. It's just so much fun. And, and uh, so anyway, you you flick a few dice out into the arena. At some point, when you run out of dice to flick in from outside, then you pick one up and you're trying to knock each other into the holes in the corner. Or kind of like in Strike, you can knock one of your opponents onto like the uh, onto their back. The dice look like little d animals, and oh, so if their cute. feet are straight up in the air, then they're like knocked out too. I love that. Oh, I interesting. Really love that. That's cute. And yeah. and, and That's that cute. to me makes it better than the wrestling game. Mm, okay. When I, I first when the they first told version. me, I was like, "This is so dumb," and I played it. And I was like, "This is amazing." <laughs> really? It's really good. I didn't even really heard of this. Is. That's interesting. Yeah, it's a lot huh. of fun. So yeah, Kung Fu Zoo. My number seven is the least game of all the games. They, in fact, it wasn't a game until they added an expansion that turned it into a game. But it was originally just a stacking thing. But that's still a game. Don't make it fall. And that is Beasts of Balance. So Beasts of Balance oh. does have an expansion, which has a very competitive way to play against other people. Before that, it was more of a cooperative game. So imagine that these pieces can move and stack on top of this thing. So this, this works with your smart device. And you stack these pieces on, but what happens is as you stack these different animals, they will crossbreed with each other, 
and make really funky weird animals. You mix a lion with an eagle and you get a, a legal or whatever. Not illegal. Uh, legal. legal. Illegal. Illegal eagle. I know, it sounds like illegal. Anyway, um, and then you could crossbreed that with something else and it's, it's really interesting. The, the kids, everyone I've showed this to is really fascinated to watch, but they also made these shapes, some of the hardest to stack shapes in the history of humanity. <laughs> They're really weird shapes. And you cross, like those X's, and that's how you crossbreed stuff with each other, and you can upgrade them. I really like this one. I, I wonder if the company, something's happened to them, because they keep advertising all the time, and they there was supposed to be an expansion. I don't even know if I got the newest expansion with some more, mm. I got some, some fantasy animals, but it seemed like it's fizzling out, which is unfortunate, because it's such a neat yeah. concept. Have you played it? No, I haven't. Have you? I haven't. No, I've, I've seen it multiple times and have wanted to, but the mixing the technology, I wasn't sure, which I'm usually a big fan of apps and games, but I couldn't quite wrap my head around it to, to actually seek it out. Now, Mike raises a good question. What's the bear factor on this one? Yes. There is a bear. Yes. There is a bear. I've mixed the bear with many things. A bear octopus. High bear factor. Ooh. Ooh. I know. Oh. And I haven't even discovered all the mixes yet, which bugs me. I want to like just set them on there, but you can't cheat in this game. It's like a little pressure plate that Bluetooths with your phone or whatever, and when you put the stuff on, it, it it will stack and it will show you if it falls, nothing happens. It has to stay there for a certain amount of seconds. Mm, okay. Interesting. Tell me more about this bear octopus while we cut to the next one. I don't remember yeah. what it's called, Broctopus. Where the. It's like if a it's contraction. Rare, there's I take not an E-A out. B apostrophe so or octopus. You never heard of Burl Rabbit? He was a bear rabbit. What's your number six? My number six is a crossover, unfortunately, with uh -huh. Mr. Vassal. With me. Yeah, that's, Wait, that's which disappointing. which one is it? It has to be my number eight. Which one? Drop it. No. Sonora. Like huh? Sonora. Sonora. You acted like you hadn't played it when I talked about it. There well, because no I have stuff up? to say. All right, go I'm ahead waiting. and say stuff. I'm waiting. Come on. It's a good game. Uh, no, I like Sonora for the reason that you talked about, too. It's one of those that somebody tells you the game and explains it. It's a roll and write, but also dexterity with the two different boards, and it just doesn't seem like it's going to work. Right. It's like, I don't get that, but what if I don't get what I need dexterity, then it hurts my board and the roll and write falls apart. And I was really surprised that that doesn't happen. So even as you are doing the dexterity, if you don't get exactly what you want, there, there's still something you can do on your board, and so it still feels like you are progressing. So you, you have this flexibility within the dexterity. There's you know, no it, hole in the board that if it falls in there, you get nothing. Right, exactly. Yes. And so it really becomes more of a ta tactical kind of decision. It's like, all right, I'm going to go for this because this is best. Dang it, I didn't get it. All right, fine. Let me adjust on my board and see how I can best work with what I did get. So it, so it, it leads to more tactical play instead of um, a lot of dexterity games, especially if they're competitive, have that feel of whoever no, I, I just, it's like almost a punching game. You know what I mean? Like I punch you, you punch me, something like that, or, or the balls, or, or flicking the balls, or whatever. But I feel like this one does a really good job of keeping you on your own board, even though you do have that central board that you guys are flicking together and you are getting the way of your opponents and trying to knock them off certain things. But then ultimately it is about how you are controlling and how you're reacting to that board on your own player, um, your player roll and write. So I really, really enjoy that combination. As, as proof of that, every time I play this with Wendy, she destroys me mm. because she's better at the, like the roll and write combo yeah. thing and she's always going like, oh, I, I flicked really poorly this round. Oh. Because she adjusts better to that, whereas like you're really, really good at Crokinole, so maybe you're getting exactly what you want, but not hitting those combos and adjusting, you know? So yeah, it, yeah so there's still a game behind this with, with really meaningful decisions that leads to Wendy crushing you. Absolutely. So, my Feel number like six, therapy session, Sonora. And that's why your wife crushes you. That's why he crushes you. Get good. Get good. Get good is a, th <laughs> a thing my therapist often says to me, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my number six is the newest to the list, and this is not going to shock either of you. Uh, it's one I just played right before Dice Tower East, and then I played it at Dice Tower East a lot. And this is called 
Puritan Billiard. <laughs> Pirate Billiard. Oh. I wondered if this would make your list. It I, did. I like it not as much as you. I'm, I'm very amused by this game. Yeah, yeah. It's really fun. So you have, uh, as you'll see here in a second, you have like a, a canvas grid. Like the bottom is made out of canvas. And you're hitting it with these cute little shillelaghs. And you're trying to knock your ball into uh, a, a grid space that has either opponents in it. And so you take those as points, as you're doing here. Or if you can hit it all the way across to the other side, you score that for three points. And if you knock it off of the off of the table, as everybody does, uh, you, just, you just lose it. It's really silly, but it's very captivating. Uh, it wasn't getting played at first at Dice Tower East, and then I, I grabbed a few people, started playing it, and it's one of the most watchable games. Well, did, mm -hmm. you, did you hear Chris say he's the reason it was played I did, the whole yeah. Time? That was, that I was, am. That was pretty wow. unhumble of him. But it looks weird, right? And mm -hmm. so until some people saw it being played... It was played... Oh, God. I mean, to be yeah. fair, I don't know how much the game was played and how much it was played with, because it is just fun. You know, everybody mm -hmm. that walked by picked that up and, and was playing it and trying to make it, you know, um, bounce around just to see, just to, just to try it out. Actually playing a full game and, like, reading the rules, I think there was, like, none of that. This is possibly the most expensive dexterity game on our list. Really? Unless Chris puts one on that, I'm thinking he might. Oh, he on our list now. Video of that one. Mm. Oh, got it. I think I think what you're thinking of. Is it on your list? I don't have it yet. I'm annoyed. It's what? my mu it's now my new Grail game. Oh. Actually, yeah. All right. That's not what I was thinking of. But I think what I'm thinking that you thought is anyway your turn, Tom. Uh -huh. That was my, my number, number six. Five. Five. I'll mention it later if Chris doesn't bring it on his list. Okay, six. my number six. Okay, so I don't want to get yelled at. But I put neither Weapons and Warriors or Crossbows and Catapults or Catapult Feud on my list. Don't worry, they'll show up later. Um, but I think they're fantastic. Later, uh, later where? Later when? What? On, on, your, on, so, on your list. How you do you know? Me, hey, yeah, whatever. <laughs> like, why are we pretending Catapult Feud's on your list? But anyway, I think they're all super fun to shoot stuff at each other. But the game that I like best in this genre is has never been remade and it's called Cube Quest. Mm. And oh, this yeah. is this is from um, Game Right, I think. I think it's hmm. Game Right. And yeah, it's Game Right. And in this action packed animation you're about to see. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I get it. So you have these things and you are flicking cubes. So you use these cubes to they're both you use them to attack and to build defensive formations that your opponent will blow up. Oh, I really like it. That's and cool. it comes with these play mats, and I was like, I can't wait for all the expansions and all the extra stuff, and it just died on a vine. Oh. I'm so sad about this one. I really like it, though. I like the idea that the stuff is both, there's one king die. You gotta knock that king die off the board. So you can build like a, a castle wall in front of it, or you can be like, ah, we're just going on the offense. It's really fun. Oh, that's cool. That's an interesting take on it. How, I, how cool. quick do you like set it up versus the, the amount of time you're actually playing it? Oh, I don't know, like a minute or two, or just a, it's like this many cubes. I'm just like, da, 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 da. okay, let's go. That's, That's really cool. what it is. Hmm. I really like it. It's in the library because I refuse to take it out because I enjoy this game. That's really cool. It's it's a game I played probably with Melody a lot when it first came out. We really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. No, Holly. Holly was the one I played it with. Okay, that'd be interesting. I bet my son would like that a lot. That's fun. Wait, somebody said there's a new edition <gasps> of Cube Quest? There's a new edition. They said it in caps. Come to Germany. Read. Please, Ryan, Tom at dicestar.com. I would like to get the link to this. I want it right now. Interesting. Yes. Huh. My number five is another real time game, but in this one, it's opposite of Fuse, and the stacking you're is building the bomb. already <laughs> stressful. <laughs> yeah, you're building the bomb. <laughs> it's already stressful without the time limit. This is for science. I really, well, I'm going to explain the game first, I guess. In this one, you are trying to create a vaccine of sorts. And so you have your, your lab and you're making certain restrictions in order for, f to, to create this vaccine. So perhaps as you're putting these cards out, the purple has to be, has to touch a green, but 
can't touch it. Well, okay, we'll go higher than that. I can't really see the picture here. So above the blue up there, that purple has to touch a blue and a green, but has to cannot touch the red, even though they have to be on the same level. So you're trying to make this in cards on your board, and then you have to build it in person to see if it works. Then once you see if it works, somebody has to go through card by card to verify it in order to then you you down the line you end up then getting another puzzle piece and it becomes actually a uh, puzzle on the board where you're trying to map out and do kind of a set collection kind of thing in order to get enough of these things done in 15 minutes to create a, a, a vaccine that's needed. Oh, 15 so, minutes. In 15 minutes. So that's why it's, it is real time, but it's it's one of those where you have 15 minutes as just a timer going down. So, that, so the real time fades to the background other than it's really, really difficult. <laughs> and uh, 15 minutes goes really fast. This is a lot of fun because it is that dexterity where you're not, it's telling you what to do, but you've set those parameters for yourself. And if you can't get it to work, you can go back to the drawing board and be like, you know what, I can't make this word work, wipe it off and reset it. So I, I like that you are trying to create this to get the components that you need and then see if it works. And maybe you can't, maybe you cannot get that orange to not touch the blue. It's just, it's just not possible because uh, they're all really weird shapes like you saw and that kind of stuff as well. So it, it's stressful, it's fun, but it also feels smart, for lack of a better word. You I know, think like it's smart. one of the thinkiest it dexterity is. games out there. Because you have oh, so to I know. I take 30 minutes to play. I do what I want. That's why you win, yeah. Well, I didn't say I won. Science oh. has no timeline. Oh. <laughs> So yeah, I, just, I really like it because it is thinking and you have to know when to give up and when to just keep pushing. No, I can make this work. I can make this work. And then when you get it, you're like, hands up, somebody check it. Check it before it falls, you know, and it just leads to some really great moments. And when you get it, it just feels so good. You're like, I cannot believe I made that work. Moving on, got to do it again <laughs> from the top. So nope. for science, is, is, it's fantastic. I like the idea that all scientific research do that at some point. Like, hands up, let's check it. Hands up, does it work? Where's my guinea pig? I learned that from reality <laughs> cooking shows. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Just like that. So, yeah, so my number five for science. I find it's a, it's a lot of fun. Like you said, a really thinky dexterity. My number five is not thinky. Oh. Not thinky at all. But it has a fantastic theme. I, I really like it. it live at Dice Diaries. My bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I did not. Oh, no, no uh, my number five is a delightful game about pushing cubes. This is one of those pushing ones. It's called Kabuto Sumo. Someone mm. had predict predicted in the chat earlier. Uh, I gave the basic base game of Kabuto Sumo, I think like a 7 or 7.5. And then the expansion just came out recently, which has a bunch of alternate win conditions besides just push your opponent's beetle off the map. So like this one, send them flying through a table. I love that. If you're the one that breaks the table on your turn, or you push your opponent off the uh, out of the ring, you win. And just having those like having those little fun uh, um, throwbacks, those little um, what are those called? Like Easter eggs towards wrestling. Because unlike Tom, I loved pro wrestling. Back I'm in just the day. kidding. I watch mm. pro wrestling. Did you really? Wow. Not publicly. No. <laughs> well, public now. I liked I liked you know WWE when I was a kid and so and those this expansion has all the tropes in it the table the ladder match the the briefcase full of money so like it gives you other things to go for because the original game could you could kind of have stalemate where people push the other person closer to the edge and then they push them back and if people just play defensively like that it just goes on forever and with this one you just you you can't do it that. It can't. You're gonna. It's gonna end. It's gonna end, and that mm -hmm. makes it so much more fun. So yeah. So my number five, Kabuto Sumo, particularly with the um, <laughs> massive mayhem expansion. I forget what they, what it's called offhand. Hmm. All right, my number five. I've never won this game. It's a cooperative dexterity game. We played it live recently. I think. Maybe I think we played it in a marathon. Anyway, this is Dungeon Fighter. So this is in the category of throwing things at a board. Gosh, I forgot about this one. You're just throwing dice oh, onto a board, it's and out. it's a target. This picture clearly shows how it works. Oh, uh, wow. <laughs> I think Mike, like, <laughs> Mike is trolling me now. I, I definitely think he f tried to find the worst pictures. Okay, so, <laughs> so you can see one-fourth of a target in the bottom there, and you build this target, and you'll be throwing dice onto it, or bouncing dice. Here's the thing, I thought Dungeon Fighter was fun. This deluxe version is even more fun because it comes with rubber dice and a ramp and it's just stupidity. And I don't know how you can win because it's so hard. 
And yet, it's hilarious. And at some point, you just start having fun with it. I, at the you know what I mean? Like, game, I mean, like, I like you stop fun. trying to oh. win. I mean, you know what I mean? You're just like, it doesn't matter. Hold yeah. on. You know, next thing you know, you're all shooting from the hip. And yeah. Right. So. Literally. Shooting from the Literally hip. Literally shooting from the hip. This is, and Boy. I would agree with you, Tom. This is one of those big box, like everything, all the expansions, the one box versions of a game that I think is really good. I agree. I'm like, I'll use all yeah, of this yeah. at some point. Yeah. And yeah. I got the water dice, which is a bunch of little dice, and I got the big dice, and there's wooden dice, and there's 12 sided dice that you can use for no reason at all, and there's four different targets, and all the monsters you just put in a big giant stack, because who cares? Mm -hmm. This is yeah. not. If you have a friend who's like really serious about RPGs, you should play this with them to mess with their mind. Oh, absolutely. What's your dump stat? It's clearly not dexterity. Oh. Hey oh. <laughs> All right. That was lazy. Well, since you already spoiled my list, my number four is catapult feud. Kingdoms. Which one is it called? Catapult it's now Kingdoms. Kingdoms. Okay, they changed it. I'm sorry, I get confused. No, Catapult Kingdoms is the. I don't You're know. You're the one who picked the picture. Mm, did I, though? Uh, all right, Catapult Kingdoms is we're, what we're going we're blaming with. Blaming Mike this list, okay, remember? Got it. Uh, Catapult Kingdoms, so. It's similar to what you were saying, but in this you actually, it, with the dice one where you're building, in this one you're building up a castle, you place your little men out, and then you have ballistas, and you have catapults, and you're shooting these rubber balls at the other person's castle to try to knock down all of their people, all their soldiers. First one to knock them all down wins. I, I love this game. It is it is a lot of fun to set up, and, and again, this is one that I play with my son, uh, where he will build a big castle, and he'll spend like 30 minutes coming up with this castle, you know, and he, he, he does it and redoes it and thinks about it and positions his guys just right, and then once you start playing and you start throwing these rubber and balls, like, it does not matter. And then I demolish matter. it in and two then I minutes. And crush him! <laughs> <laughs> Teaching my child preparation means nothing. Right, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I, I really enjoy this. It's just flat out fun. Um, and and you are, we always move the table so that we're playing on the floor, you know, and really like put them far apart so you can really like pull back far and, and shoot the ball really hard. I, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's just chaos. It, it, um, this is kind of a remake of Weapons and Warriors, but it's very good quality. I know mm -hmm. this because he showed me. By standing on pieces at Dice Diaries. Oh, did he? Yes. Oh, I also, didn't see did that. you see the Hydra? I didn't no. see that. I didn't make it over there. No. Really? So the three headed Hydra, and he pulled back and shoots <gasps> and shoots a flaming black marble out of its mouth or it's something. Flaming? No, but it could be. Oh. I mean, anything could be flaming if you try it's hard. True. Enough. It's true. Um, <laughs> so now he has this three piece thing in the center. Like, I always thought the volcano was kind of meh. Yeah, I didn't care about that one. But now you put the volcano, the Viking ship, and the Hydra as a three-piece setup in the middle. Does the Viking oh. ship rock back and forth? No. No, it like slowly gets closer. It. Yeah, yeah. It has a cannon that, that like you. comes closer. But it doesn't seesaw. That's what I'm getting at here. <gasps> no, I was ignoring your dumb jokes. Catapult Feud is a great game. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. This is another one of those that's like really fun to watch. Even though I've oh, never yeah. I've never played it, but yeah, I've, I've seen um, I've seen your kid. I think it was your kid, Mike, at one time just set it up. My kid was terrible at oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And mine's like, ah! I don't know where he gets it. He's, he's so aggressive. You know, he told me something <laughs> hilarious at the con. He said that. Not my kid. Not your kid. Yeah. Oh, the, the, just, the, yeah. the guy running it. <laughs> You're right. That was a bad transition. <laughs> he said that they had like 50 of the red balls, and after a weekend of running it at a con, they were all gone. He said they put one out there. And it never got lost. Oh, that is a that is a hard rule in our house. We each get one ball, <laughs> yep. and if you can't find it, the automatic you know the other person just keeps going until you find it. And so it's like you know where that you have eyes on that ball the and entire if you think time. That's that, my rule is, <laughs> Dad never has to chase the balls down. Oh, if that you want to even play this game with Dad, yeah. this is a gift. You have to chase off the balls whether and, and I they shoot do. them or you shoot them. They do because it's that funny. He's like, okay. You know, yeah, it's it totally amazing. works. Yeah, it's, it's the best gimmick ever. Yeah, so this ping, is a the, go the ahead. ping pong rules. Yeah, like when I play with my kid, I'm like, look, you're gonna hit it like all over the place. You have to get it, and then I hit it all over the place. <laughs> and I'm like, oh no, it's too far. Guess I better clean up. Oh, Someone says, can so you fast. catapult a cow? You can't, mm -hmm. but you can catapult a beehive. 
You, which oh, the is smelly fish! Amazing. They have the fish too. The smelly oh, fish, right. and so they have different things you can catapult as well, and they all have some different effects. Like the smelly fish, if it doesn't have to, if it is just touching, I think one of the people, then it makes them pass out because it stinks so bad, and so yeah. they just like real life. Just like real life. <laughs> so it has, and it has all these like weird card things that break the rules. It's just, but it's still so simple. And at the end of the day, it's it's just raucous fun. So yeah. I mean, I know that was a joke, but also in medieval warfare, they would catapult nasty stuff. Oh, absolutely. They would catapult dead bodies. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, my yep. gosh. Yep. On that delightful note, my number four <laughs> is also a... Well, it, yeah, it's a it, this is a flicking game, or you can approach it how you want to, but the point is that you need to launch your spaceships at... Uh, or you launch your ships, your fighter ships at opponent's spaceships, and that's called flip ships. Oh, a cooperative so game where things are coming down. It's... it's um, what is that? What's the old video game? Um, Space Invaders. Space right. Invaders. Yeah, yeah. So you haven't played Space Invaders then? The the one that's based on this? N no. That one has a little catapult, right? Yeah, but I mean, it's it's other than the catapult, it's the exact same game. No, I played I played flip ships only. You went far uh, for this footage. That's Dice Tower Cruise last year. That that's is. That's my game where that's I your, was playing. You dirty. were teaching me. You are dirty. I like that you're insulting me. You're ruining me. this list for everyone. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> everyone. Mike is upset. I'm upset. Camille's upset. We're all the upset. viewers are upset. That's I'm right. upset. The, the, the electricity's upset. I think production is going off. <laughs> Shut up, Roy. Yeah, go away. You need to. <laughs> <laughs> but this is great. I mean, yeah, you you try to knock out the uh, spaceships as they're coming on down. Uh, is the is the Space Invaders one still good too? Yeah, it's exact. It, it, it's literally the same game. Okay. Cool. I think okay. The, the quality is slightly down. Because it's a made for mass market. More mass market, yeah. But oh, interesting. But I thought it was. I thought somebody said it was better because you actually have like a catapult thing with it. Am I? Yeah, I like the catapult. Oh, okay. Sideways catapult. Instead you of shoot. like you know breaking your finger, flicking like, like hitting, the, hitting the table yeah, instead of. Yeah, I like the, the catapult <laughs> better than that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, no, I'll give that a try. But great Quanche Moria artwork. Like this. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, this is yeah. really cool. So anyway, thank you for for teaching it to me, introducing yeah, me to. Yeah, and it, giving the footage so you can you know one up us. You're welcome. No. My number four, <laughs> I saw getting played a couple times at Dice Diaries, and I was so pleased. Although it was being played on small tables, and it should be played on a big table because it is a bit, we have the giant version of it, and that is Flick 'em Up. Flick 'em Up, mm. uh, well, I think we're all flicking all the time at this point uh, on the <laughs> way out here. Yeah. So I like flicking games, oh, I'm not. but I like the team versus team aspect of this one. The Western motif is fun, but just shooting discs across, trying to knock over the cowboys or the outlaws, and it's just it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. This is one of those games that comes with wooden terrain that makes sense. You're like, oh, I can put this stuff out there. It's pretty fast to set up. And honestly, it's really wide open. Just throw stuff out, right? Because it's a town, and now you have two teams fighting. So flick them up. Very, very fun. I especially like the little hats you put on the people that... You take off if they're getting hit and stuff. So, yeah, it has a great look and fun. I don't know. It doesn't take itself too seriously. It has a decent amount of rules, but like not too many, right? So yeah. Saying, are you saying like rather than if they get hit and they lay down, you take the hat off? I think you flip the brim of the hat upside down. Oh, that's you know? cute. When I like they, that. When they've acted. Oh, well, when like, they've acted, that's what happens, right? Oh, that's yeah. cool. I love things like that. That visual reminder, yeah. Mm -hmm. like so it. there's a big deluxe version of this you can buy. I don't know if I would recommend you get that. There's also a zombie version. Um, it depends on how big of an area, but if you have the big area, the big one's great. It's kind of pricey, though. So I didn't realize how many real-time games I had on my list until just now. I guess I like that combination of real-time and dexterity. Anyway, because my number three is another real-time one. It's Rush MD. I I really like the mini games in this, which is what where the dexterity comes to. You know, so you are running a hospital and you have patients that come in that you have to diagnose and then treat in order to get them out within the three-minute timeline or you know the day. And so the mini games, as you can see, this not way it's gonna in this picture. In just it's like not any God. time. Okay, no. So, so dexterity here. There's certain things you have to do, like you have to to 
there's these little, they're not cute, I guess they're cylinders that you have to put into a syringe. And at some places, if you're doing surgery, you have to use tweezers to do that. Some people need an MRI, and so you have to take one of these timers and balance it on the corner of their bed, you know, and turn it over. Uh, there's just all these little different mini games depending on what they need, if they need an x-ray or if they need the MRI, um, surgery, things like that. And so it's all done within this three minute time that, that you have to try and admit these patients, diagnose them, treat them, and get them, you know, sent out the door the evening in order to hopefully treat them correctly. Because if not, then you actually get negative effects from them and then they get worse the next day and so they're actually harder to treat. It's kind of this cascading effect. So it's the good pressure of the dexterity uh, within that time limit to, to do it right and as well as it has these little tools, which I'm not usually a fan of because I find that that, I, I'm not a fan of like super fiddly games like this, that, but for, the, for whatever reason it works in this with that time crunch with that cooperative nature of okay guys I really need to focus on this somebody else clear these patients because I'm, I'm stuck over here trying to to load up this syringe or do this blood transfusion or you know whatever it is so it works really well in this it's chaotic fun I like the fact that it is so much pressure in that three minute time period and then you do have that break that you go okay hold on all right let's talk about what happened um okay make a plan for the next round this one's gonna be hard to treat. I'm gonna go over here and do that because it's gonna take a lot of concentration. So you have that planning phase as well where you kind of catch your breath and reset. So, so Rush MD is again, real time, mixed with dexterity. Actually, some of them are a little bit challenging and then put the time on top of that and it's, uh, it's chaotic. I, I guess I like chaos. Yeah, have fun trying to take someone's heart out. Never thought how hard it is to pick up the heart with tweezers. Oh, My yeah, yeah. word, that's hard. It is so hard. Yeah, it has that little break, and you have to try to get it with that break, like in that little break. Uh, oh, my gosh. It's, it's, that's it's not what a real really heart is shaped hard. like. Yeah. Um, I like this game a lot. It kills Food Rush. Is it Food Rush? Or? Um, kitchen Rush. Kitchen, kitchen Rush. rush. Kitchen rush. It yeah, kills yeah. Kitchen Rush. This is so much better in every way. I I thought of this and then described that there's not enough dexterity in it, but you're right. Filling those bottles with those, like, come on! Well, and then like, and then you you end up doing it with the tweezers, and then afterwards you're like, I didn't have to use tweezers on that one. I could have used my hand, ah, because there's only certain times that you have to use tweezers or or, or yeah, whatnot. Yeah, we don't sterilize so like, for all patients. Just some. Yeah, just some. Just some. Yeah. Some. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's just it's really interesting. It's a good co-op game. I like it a mm -hmm. lot. Let's go. Yeah. I have to try this it's one. Fun. I think you've taught it to Wendy, but not me. For okay. Some reason, so I wasn't... you have no one to play it with now. Mm -hmm. No one. No one. I'll solo it. That sounds... That this, sounds really sad. To solo, <laughs> like, a real-time dexterity game. You're like, oh, that was tough. And you're laughing. Me? Oh, was that funny? <laughs> well, it was. Okay. Yeah, right. This is not a good solo I think that's the thing about dexterity games. They're best played Absolutely. in groups if you can pull it off. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, man. Soloing Jenga would just be so defeating. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, ha I got you. Is that your number three? Me? Jenga? Nope. My number three is a crossover, though. <gasps> Hiya. With Thomas, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a game. I'll give you one hint: you drop things. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was gonna guess drop it anyway. Yeah, drop it. Because I know you like this a lot. I really do. It is a lot of fun. Uh, you, I mean, you describe so much about it, right? Like the the numbers part of it is fun because you're getting these points based on how high up it gets. Wait, we couldn't have used this same video though for mine. You, no. you can take that up with Mike. Crystal, Mike specifically, do not allow. <laughs> <laughs> you could have. Oh man! <laughs> uh, oh Mike. Oh I'm Mike. I'm doing videos of oh, paintings from now on. Mike. I don't care what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but I like that there's those little circles kind of throughout too, so that gives you some extra stuff to aim for. You can get two, three, four bonus points by going for like a maybe a trickier area or trying to get the the edge of your uh, of your rhombus piece just poking into it like that there's just so many satisfying little moments when this. it happens you're like that was skill right yeah. I'll Definitely never believe not you because yeah. I know right you get yep. you, you get those creative people who are like if I drop it while moving oh yeah it'll have a little momentum and tuck <laughs> in that corner like yeah pe it, people have a lot of fun with this one yeah all right I would not have expected 20 years ago for my number three to be another, this is a second, dungeon crawl dexterity game on my list. But they exist. It's hilarious to me anyway. My number three is Catacombs. Catacombs is not just a, a good dexterity game. It's a good game. Hmm. Like, when I play Dungeon Fighter, we win, we lose, I don't care, just silly fun. Catacombs, you are trying to win. 
because it's all about making shots with your your characters and i love how every character has different things if you're the archer of little discs that you shoot if you're the barbarian you can shoot multiple times and hit the monsters oh, I love that. each monster has special abilities he has made a ton of expansions for this it's a one versus many although i want to say there's probably a in their co -op. Full co-op co version co okay. i like the one versus many though because as the dungeon master i get to play my hardest against them because i i'm terrible at shooting discs so they're probably going to win anyway it is a lot of fun. Is there not a picture of the game itself? Is there a picture itself? of the board? I'd like to the see board. it. The board. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was trying no, to visualize it. No, come that. on! It's a picture of all the components <laughs> again! <laughs> come on! How did it move? They were... All right. So imagine right. some of these Sorry. pieces <laughs> on a board. It's like Kabuto Sumo. All right. Well, anyhow, that's... Uh, in the middle there is the gelatinous cube, which I think is great because it's a cube. So, anyway. <laughs> oh, that is great. <laughs> yes, there's a lot of cool things there. Um, I really like this game. So my number three, Catico. Have you have you ever played this one? I no. haven't. No, I was hoping to see the board to maybe understand it. <laughs> <But> <laughs> okay, I get no. it, Mike. I'll do my own pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh... Very good. Uh. That's one I would like to play, Thomas. Yeah, we played it live on a marathon like seven years ago. It's been a while. Oh, I didn't realize it was that old even. Wow. Well, here's the thing. When it first came out, with all due respect to Ellsworth Games, it was ugly. Okay. Was oh, interesting. a black box that looked like nothing. And I said, this game's really fun despite how it looks. And then Quan Chi Mori did the art. And I was like, oh, that was oh, yeah, amazing. Yeah, I think it, it looks fantastic yeah, now. Yeah, That's awesome. That's nice. Um, speaking of which, my number two is one that I was introduced to with one of our live plays, and that is Manara. So in mm. Manara, um, we did a live play, and I think it hit about halfway through when I had the the compulsion to like take my phone out and take a picture of it. You know, I was like completely lost. It doesn't happen very often, like completely lost in the fact that I'm live on camera and I'm just sucked into the game. And it's like, oh my gosh, and I wanted to take out and get that moment. And you I was like, you should have taken huh? a video. Like like all of yours? No, Can I keep up with you? Is that what I should aim for? I'm sad too, okay? <laughs> I'm sad Oh wait, also. we're on the same team here. Yeah. Why are you getting it up on me? Just saying what you We're anti-Chris. I'm going to look at the file next time. <laughs> <laughs> so in this one, yeah, you are trying to uh, build up to a certain height, but in order to do that, you have to make sure you're expanding out enough, but you don't want to expand out too much because then you're wasting some of your res not your resources, some of your tiles and some of your um, pillars as well. And what? Mike's comment is <laughs> 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 Oh, no, right, you've not had to bleep me yet. <laughs> Have you? We're on know. camera. You're being good. No, oh, thanks. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I love that this game, and ever since then, when I've played it, every time there is that moment where everyone is like, all right, don't touch the table. Okay, here we go. And someone pulls out their, cam their, their phone and is taking a picture or a video or something like that. You just get so sucked into it, and it's, it's a cooperative, cooperative, so you're rooting for each other. Like it's the it's the quiet the, the quietest I've ever been when I'm being loud if that makes sense you know because I'm like you can do it you got you know like you're whispering you're trying not to be like loud energetic but you're just like so much energy and just like ecstatic inside as it comes together so it's like inside you're like screaming and outside you're like golf clap you know so I don't know I, I love it I lo I think it just has some great moments where everyone is completely 100% in the game and and the background like just one? melts away I enjoyed it I enjoy it quite a bit um this I is think the that one I'm on the opposite of everybody on you don't like I it. I don't like it really what about it I don't like being told what to do every time I do an action it's just not fun you're like I'm gonna, I was like no you need to do this you need to put this pillar here I'm like All sounds right, like fine. a player problem yeah but I don't I like I don't know that cooperative dexterity works for me. I like the competition part of it. Or, or I mean, you talk about mm. Rush MD, that's real time. You're, everyone's kind of doing their own thing. That's but different, it's not so much about it. It's like, hurry up and do your little thing there. Yeah, no one's going, so we can go on. put the pill in the vial! <laughs> put the pill in the vial! <laughs> yeah, yeah no. I, I don't know, I like this one because I think that, uh, kind of what Tom said about Catacombs, the, underneath the dexterity and all that part is a good game. The resource mm -hmm. management of the pillars and everything, like it's not, extreme it's mostly 
stacking stuff up. Mm -hmm. But there is enough uh, of a game underpinning it that it's, it remains interesting, yeah. even when it's not like the tensest of moments. Right, because you are balancing the different decks that you don't want to run out and things like that. So there is other things to think about, not just can I make this work? Yeah. You know, I think that's why I don't mind it telling me what to do because it's a, well, you were talking specifically about the other players telling you what to do, but I feel like there are always options. You know, and so just talking, they're like, do it over there. I'm like, no, no, hold on, hear me out. And so I think it leads to an interesting discussion if you're playing with people who are cooperative. Sure. I like it. Number two. My number two, I assume, is going to be the only three-way crossover <gasps> with both of you. Ooh. Sonora, then. Sonora. Sonora. Really? Wait I, for, yeah, I thought I was going to be expected. the only person to put it on my list. Really? Oh, oh no. I, I didn't know you liked it. I, I figured Chris would have it. Yeah. I thought it was this high. Yeah. Revel in it! Hit it! Boop! That's you, Tom. I couldn't get it played in time, so I had to use your review. Well, He's so mad. <laughs> <laughs> Again, this same thing could have been cut and pasted in earlier. Well, Mike did say that it would Although ruin that his would've... list. Yeah, that would have been fine. Yeah, I'm fine with ruining Chris's list. Uh, I'm yeah. fine with ruining anything right now. <laughs> but yeah, everything that you guys have said about it, I mean, just flicking, reacting to where stuff is. Yeah, you don't have control of where the first disc you shoot out is not going to stay in that sector. It's going to get bumped around. You might shoot it straight into the, the, the crocodile hole in the middle there. Which sounds great, because then you can put it into any of the four sectors of the roll and write that you want. But I'd, I'd rather have that, like, touching one of those multiplier yes. things. Yes. Yeah, yep. So yep. if it gets knocked into it partway through, you're like, oh, cool. <laughs> That's true. If I had not forgotten a game, Sonara would have been cut. Oh, what game? Have we said it yet? No, no and I can't imagine it. it's either of your number ones, but we'll <sighs> see. I thought it might have been on Chris's list, but I'm pretty sure I know Chris's one. Um... I don't think you know. Uh, probably. <laughs> My number two is a game that was probably not on the list the last time we did this. And I, I always looked at it as two. You know, there's, there's a couple dexterity games that are like everyone says they're amazing. Like the snooty players. Uh, Looping Louie's one of them. I don't get it. They're like, Looping Louie is amazing. I'm like, yeah, but so are all these other silly games. It's like, it's almost Hungry Hungry Hippos. On a spinner, you yeah. Know, just... But this is another one, and this one because of the skill and involved, and this is Crokinole. I'll just say Crokinole. Mm. I've really come around on Crokinole over the last, the last few years. Um, you know, I would have just, if it were me making the pictures, I would have shown off one of our beautiful boards. But sure, look <laughs> at this generic board here of Crokinole. <laughs> Poor Mike. <laughs> You're yelling at him he's because he's he, he's not yelling at him. I'm yelling it. about him. It's a little he's, different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 but he will get a strongly worded email later. No, he will not. Okay, no, this is this is the this is base crocodile. It's such a good game. It really is. I taught my son how to play it and everything just over nice areas because those boards look amazing. And there's when you play on a really nice board, by the way, I used that powder. Remember that powder you yeah, thought yeah. was drugs? Um, I did. That stuff works really well. Really, it's just like it's like really fine salt. It dust. like lifts it off the board a little bit. It's, it makes it too fast almost. I I, oh. I think I agree with that. It's like hydroplaning, and you're like, wait. Well, no, I feel like you just have to adjust at that point. It feels like it'd be a bad thing to do. Like you have to know exactly how much oh, is on there. I apologize. What. Mike says he handcrafts at this board. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. <clears throat> I'm gonna channel my inner Mike Delisi here for a second. Sus. Yeah. I think he handcrafted this slide, but that's it. Anyway, it's a, this is a fantastic game. When I was a kid, I owned, we were too poor to own Crokinole. We owned Carome, which is one with the nets in the corners, which is poor man's Crokinole. And I really loved that as a kid, but this is so much better. And also, mm -hmm. now me and Chris have discovered some new weird variants that were sent to us with um, billiards and okay. wars and stuff. I love it. Oh, oh, my, my number <laughs> my number one is a crossover with Chris, and he stole my footage for it, and we will talk later about it. That is Flip Ships. I wow. love Flip Ships. Also I, not the new one. Yeah, I haven't played the new one because I, I like this one so much. I mean, this one's the one I have. It's the one I've brought to the table so much, and I don't know. I think it's gorgeous. Um, this one also I've played in so many different groups. I've played this, again, with my son, and he thinks it's fantastic, and, and he's 
very good at it. Like, Ooh. it's... Is he good at hitting the alien ship? Because I can never do that. He is so good. He nails it every time. Oh, I tell you, he, he can tell you, I'm going to take out these three. I'm like, yeah, you can't. The cards aren't close enough. He does. He knows the ships. He knows their power. It's, it's incredible. Anyway, he's really good. I played with uh, non-gamers and brought it out to them. They're like, oh, I remember playing something like this in college. You know, and so... You know, and it's a, they have that to relate to, and they get it, and it's just a lot of fun. I've played it with series of gamers, you know, and it's kind of like how we finish the night off. Um, I, I just, it's so good. It just hits with all these different groups. You can pick it up quickly. It, it feels so great when you actually nail that shot with the exact ship you were going for. And, um, and I have just never has, done that. Really? I just shoot and hope it hits something. That's my goal in this game. Wow. I, I do aim roughly uh, at an area. Well, I do that too, but oh, no. I'm hoping it hits the ship. I don't. I never expect it to. And oh, yes, no. I, I feel the condescension, but yeah, that's how I am. Yeah, that's uh, fine. I You're can't not shoot it down either. I mean, yeah. I mean, you weren't invited to play anymore. Ever. Uh, but yeah, I, I love this game. I just think it it hits with so many different groups. It's always fun, and um, it again, it just kind of feels. So, kind of opposite of what we talked about, like you feel like you have more strategy and then you're like, all right, I'm going to go for this and this is it and this is it. All right, I completely missed, but I did do this. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, my like, ships can fire. Oh, so my God. <laughs> you know, and, and again, I remember that one that you had the cruise footage of. I have a picture of that where um, you have the camera out, but you're using it for the light because we need to know, oh, is it touching the card? And we're like all down there with the light. We're like, I don't know. Is it touching? It just has so many aha stand up and cheer moments. It, it's a ton of fun. Yeah. Using Chris's footage for yours wouldn't spoil anything. If it was my footage, but I'd be like, hey, I didn't send that. You would not. That's not allowed to quit I'd be like, wow. Thanks, Mike. You did great on mine. That's what that's what could have happened. That's what could have happened. That's what could have happened. You could have been complimented. Bizarro Mike would have done that. We call him Bike. Anyhow. Bear Mike. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. you're number one a crossover. My number one is not a crossover. So it's not Crocodile. Ooh. I thought it would be Crocodile. No, I really enjoy Crocodile. It would be in the top 20. Uh, I don't know if I could do 100. Like, it's pretty high mm. up there. But this is the one that you forgot about, Tom. <gasps> This is the one you that you, you the talked about, the, your Grail game. My number one is Spinball. No, that's not the one. I'm, oh. That's not the one that's not on my list. But yes. So Spinball. There's no video. No, no. Well, oh, this is the box trash. cover picture because there's no box cover for it. This is like a very handcrafted game where it's just a, a plank of wood. There's two holes. You have this. How do you video thing. this? What? That's uh. That's, those are my buddies playing this at uh, Tim's Board Game Cafe in Las Vegas at Meepleville. You asked him to take video and send it to you? No, I, I took this video years ago. Oh, you keep... You, you, keep, wow, you, you really it. are going... You, you spent a lot of time on this. Okay, I'm, right now, <laughs> right now, I'm putting out a bounty on this. I will buy this game from anyone. I looked it up actually just yesterday, when we were, uh, or a few days when we were making this list. And the last time one I sold on Board Game Geek was 2012. Wow. It's really bothering me. Board Game Geek has a copy of this. Apparently, Tim's Game Cafe. If you can get a copy of this, it's designed by Aaron Weisblum. Yeah. Who was co designer with um, Alan Moon on the 10 Day series. Anyway, I want this so much. I think that they're like handcrafted. There's maybe. I want someone like, to make me this game. Yeah, there's like maybe a few hundred of it. So, anyway, you have a rubber stopper and a ping pong ball, and you. You flip it out with backspin with so much English that you have to try to make it go into the hole on your opponent's side of that blocker. When you score a point, they put a little rubber stopper in front of it, and it's oh. so fun. It's such a silly game. There's no pretentiousness to it. It's just like the excitement of hitting a hole-in-one shot in golf. That, but it feels uh, so awesome when you see that ball spin back. You're like, this works. Like That there is something you can do. I can do it. It's not a hard... Yeah. I mean, it takes a while to get it down, but once you get it down, it's really easy. Seems like the hook of this is the, the fact that you're using that backspin. You know what I mean? So you're like yeah. anti-aiming, you know, in, yeah. a, in a way. And so it's like just so different. I, I've never played, but that's kind of what I'm picking up from it. Is it's just, I need to go this way, hoping I have the right amount of backspin to come back into it. And yeah, that's really interesting. Exactly. It's so cool. You can bounce it off the walls, you know, as, as people put out rubber blockers in the most obvious ways. Because you put out up to four of them to gain to five points. So if they block off one complete side, you're like, okay, now I have to shoot it so it bounces off of here, bounces over to the other side, yeah. starts spinning back into the hole, yeah. like through the blockers. Those last few points are so exciting in this. This is one of my favorite 
games. Uh, so yeah, just spin that's ball. really cool. That's really cool. Ryan asks, "Where is Ice Cold Class? Flick of Flave, Mars Open, Rhino Hero, Super Battle Crash, Octopus Flying Goblin Rampage. We can only fit ten. I'm telling you, I can do a top one hundred. There are many good games. Ice Cold was in my short list. So was Clask. Both really, really good games. My I number agree. one was never even a question here. This is what I was thinking when you said a very expensive game at East. That's another one. And I was like, Well, this one gets expensive. The base set's not too expensive. Although I would never." Dane to own just a base set of this, and that's pitch card. <laughs> yep, saw it coming. If I don't have my jump, why am I even playing? <laughs> and I have a really fun idea for pitch card next year. Actually, mm. one year at Dice Tower West, we only had one set of pitch card, just a base set. Hmm. And I had scheduled the pitch card game. I don't know if anyone here was at that. <gasps> Oops. So me and Mike Parkinson made, we went and grabbed a whole bunch of games, and we used tables and put books on tables to make the track. Oh, oh yeah. Interesting. Were you in that game? I wasn't in it, but I remember seeing it or at least seeing pictures of it after. Hmm. Yeah, this is a good track, by the way. Very good track here that this picture is. That's a great picture. Um, I think it's fantastic. That was probably the best depiction you can get other than an actual animated shot. Um, <laughs> but I love Pitch Car. We just had so much fun. Um, and yeah, there's all kinds of cool stuff. If anyone here ever makes custom stuff for pitch card, let me know because I love that. I got loops and corkscrews and jumps and all sorts of things. And I and I use only a few of them per track because you don't want to take away from the pureness that's pitch card, but it's mm. it's great. Now the that's one fun. I forgot yes. is tumbling dice. Me too! Oh, you forgot it? And I think it's because oh. it's not on Board Game Geek very easily. It doesn't show up when you go through the list. Because I went no. through page after page after page. No, it's really high if you go on there. Because well, I saw I saw it, it just didn't make my so list. I just don't like it. It's almost a choice for you then. Oh, my word. Oh, no, it was absolutely oh. a choice. <laughs> Tumbling Dice, I love. It would have been like five or six. So lots of, lot, lots of love for Tumbling Dice. Although, to be fair, Tumbling Dice, you just throw dice and see what happens. Right. Right. No, I, I really considered, or I mean, as when someone reminded me of it, we were just we happened to be talking about it in the office the other day, and I was sitting there thinking about my list and just kind of like, oh, it would probably pierce like the 10 or the 9 spot, probably. But mm -hmm. I'm still very happy with the 10 that I put on the list. Sure, There's I so am too. And ones. we're mentioning it now, so there you go. Bonus, tumbling dice. But there is so many. I like these games a lot. Table golf. You didn't make the list yet because I haven't played the full game. We just got it. Yeah. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. That's true. I did, I did consider them, but I haven't played a full game of it, and that's why I was like, nah. Yeah, I've demoed that at several of our conventions. Mm -hmm. um, someone mentioned Mars Open. I think that one's really... Have you played that I one? I have not time? played Mars Open. Have you? Yeah. We had it here for a while. That's really neat. It, it has a uh, it has a cardstock golf ball, but it's just it's the corners are bent opposite each other, Kind of a thing, so that it it flicks really well. If you get good at it, when you when you flick it, you can make it like spin around and go around curves. You set up obstacles. It comes with big cardboard standing obstacles. You can use the boxes. Like it has a fun little gimmick to it. I think that one's a really neat one that I don't see talked about too often. Doug uh, says pool is a better board game than crocodile. That's not true. Pool pool is not a board game. Uh, he says you can use the board as a game table. You really can't Ooh. unless you stand. Yeah, it's, it's uncomfortable There's nowhere to put heights. your legs underneath. Yeah. I have used a pool table for a great spot to put up a um, pitch card track, though. I've done that oh, before. Interesting. Oh, yeah. That was when back when I was in uh. Korea, and I was like, I'm going to run pitch card for the guys at church. And I was only like four or five blocks living from church, so I carried all the pitch card there and wow. almost took my back out. That's oh really gosh. heavy, that stuff. Oh my gosh. So I was doing this stupid thing. I had these two big bins full of pitch car, and I would carry one bin for 100 feet, put it down, go back at the other one, carry it, you know, hoping no one would, <laughs> no one's gonna steal <laughs> no it, I guess. No one's gonna take it, right, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. man. Anyway, lots and lots of dexterity games. Let us know your favorites in the comments. Thank you, and listen, all joking aside, Mike does a great job putting this stuff together. Yeah. He does. And uh, he's gonna be with us. You're like, well, I wish you could see Mike. In a week and two days, the Dice Tower Summer Spectacular will begin, starring Mike Delisio. He will be playing starring. every game. He's in every top ten. That's yes. not true. But you'll see him. You'll see him during that time. He's, He's just sleeping in the corner, like I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> I keep playing. We'll work him to death. Anyway, thank you, and also Roy for bringing us the hammer. He brought the so hammer. Good. So good. Well, we need to hide that from her now. Uh, Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Camilla. I'm the wielder of the hammer, Chris. <sighs> 
Not and for this long. this is the, the DTU, Daystar Universe? Is that a Marvel show?